What's up, DIY queens? It's your design bestie, Kara Newhart, and this is Make Space. Welcome back. Today, this is a fun episode. We are getting a little woo-woo, so get excited. Um, But I've titled this one, Put Down the Power Tools. Let's use this season to figure out what you actually need in your spaces. So when it comes to creating things and creativity, which we talked about in depth on the episode about the creative process, there's two phases and it's a cycle. There's the ideas inspiration phase where you're kind of doing internal work of thinking what you want, creating a plan, dreaming, and then there's the action phase where you take actual physical steps to put that plan into action. And then that works as a cycle. So then you go back into that creative phase where then you can kind of reflect on like what you made. Is it working? Do we need changes? And you kind of go in this cycle. Now that's an oversimplified version, of course, but basically with winter and the holidays, um, this is a time when a lot of people are really seeing what's not working in their house whether it's because you're making a wish list of things you want and you're looking around your house at all the things you need to do, um, whether it is hosting and kind of realizing like the sticky points of your house where things are piling up, where things are kind of out of order, where you need to add more function, or whether it's as we get into January where all the really organized people are telling us to make our resolutions and dream our dreams and plan our plans and it feels like a lot of pressure and you're thinking of like what you want to change about your home in the next year and so it can feel um yeah there's just a lot going on so i wanted to take an episode and kind of not say like what you should do to your house during the holidays because i think you should do nothing i think you should enjoy the holidays And do the little things here and there that you need to do, like purging some toys or donating to Goodwill or um, whatever that is, like the little stuff. But the big sweeping stuff you don't need to stress about, but you can use it as a season to just kind of observe. Like watch how you're living in your space. Watch how you're entertaining. Watch when your schedule gets busy, where things pile up, and then just kind of observe. And then as we go into the new year... When after the holidays, we start making plans and setting resolutions, you can take all those observations and now you actually know what to focus on, what to do. So this is kind of some insight into that process. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is like natural growth cycles. It's not always time to be hands on. And I think our culture and society is very like productivity focused which is amazing and definitely part of like we need to be doing things. You know, you can't just like sit around and think all the time or dream. Um, But it can be to the detriment of like letting us actually have space to rest and reflect and then rejuvenate to then go back out there and do it again. So natural growth cycles have phases. Like if you think of the seasons, which is the best example, You have winter, spring, summer, fall, and each cycle has a different purpose in this sort of like internal slow shutdown versus growing, like fast going. Um, And it's kind of like a, it goes in, yeah, it goes in a cycle. And so in the journal, there's a whole section that kind of focuses on self-care. And I believe that your house, like you can set up your house to be a form of self-care and use your environment to help be a form of self-care. But in the journal, we talk about this in the context of these four cycles. And so I wanted to go over them so that you can kind of understand these more. So the first cycle is releasing. And this phase is all about letting go of what is not working. So think of this as fall, like leaves are falling off of the trees, like they are dying, they are dead, they are not serving the tree anymore. The tree needs to hibernate, so we're letting go of the leaves. So when you're in this releasing stage, it could be kind of intangible, like you're letting go of your limiting beliefs, you're letting go of others' opinions, or you're letting go of like physical items, like getting them out of your house. And so this is like a big breakthrough, like you're really like letting things go, letting things die, letting things be like 
done. And this is a phase a lot of people avoid because it feels, it can feel like you're dying. (laughs) You know, it can feel like it's a huge change. It feels like either we're letting go of things that are sentimental, we're letting go of items that a past version of us was holding on to. For example, like I... (laughs) I get a lot of things that I'm like, I have great plans for, for a project, like big pieces of furniture, little, like over here, I'm looking at these like weird baskets that I was like, Ooh, I'm going to turn these into light fixtures. And so we can have a lot of like physical items that pile up that represent like things we think we're going to do or a person we think we're going to be. And so sometimes letting those go feels like killing off a dream we had or killing off hope or, um, letting go like if you're letting go of of your grandma that passed away's items it's like you feel like you're losing your connection to her so letting go can be intense and that's why people struggle so hard with decluttering it's not actually about that we want so much stuff it's about the letting go process is intense so this is usually best done in the fall and you may have not done this phase in the fall so just keep this in mind for when it comes back around or if you feel like aligned, you can do this in the new year. A lot of people feel um, the need to purge things in January, like real motivated, like let's get this stuff out. So this isn't necessarily a process you can only do in the fall. It's just that this is a like fall cycle. Okay, the next stage. This is the stage that we are in. And this I have written down as the cleansing stage. But basically, it's all about clearing away smaller things that are unpleasant or unwanted. And the vibe in this stage is winter. So this is, it's not necessarily about like actually cleaning, but it's about like small things. Like we are in the hibernation phase. We are slowing down, we are resting. And the main focus of this stage is reflecting. Like looking at, you know, the year we just had and kind of seeing like, what we did, how far we've come, and what would we like to change next time? Like, what do we still want to accomplish? And so this is kind of the phase that we are in now. And so this is why I'm saying, like, don't start a new project and put your tools down because you can just let yourself be in this phase and let yourself, like, enjoy the holidays, spend time with family, not feel like you need to be changing anything about your house or making plans for anything about your house, but just observing and reflecting. So they, I have written down four ways that we can like do this practically. Um, number one is notice the pileup. So as your schedules get busy and as lots of stuff is coming in and out of your house, whether it is like people sending you fruitcakes, which like you don't need that kind of friend in your life. Get the people that are sending you like queso and popcorn. Um, but as gifts are coming in, gifts are going out, people are coming over, you're making stuff for parties or you're um, planning for, you know, goodie bags or whatever it is. There's a lot of stuff coming in and out and our schedules get busy during this time. And so there's going to be areas of your house where things pile up and just like notice this. Like maybe it's your entryway where, you know, coats and boots are now out and they are piling up and they're making a mess and you're like, ooh, I really need to tackle this space. Um, The time to do it is not now when the coats and boots need to be there. The time to do it is later when there's no coats and boots and it's clear. (laughs) It's not going to disrupt your life. Um, So yeah, just kind of observe. It could be your kitchen. Like there's a corner of your kitchen that just gets really cluttered and seems to be like the drop zone. For a lot of people, this is the island. Like the kitchen island is just you put stuff there and it's the catch-all and it's like the home base for putting something that needs to go somewhere else. Um, It could be your bedroom. There's always the chair. Like if you have a chair in your bedroom, that's an accent chair that you don't actually use. You pile all your clothes on it. It's I call it the purgatory chair because the clothes aren't dirty, but they're not clean because you wore them once. So to the chair, like put it there. Um, So just notice like as you're busy and as you don't have time to maybe do your normal routine. Like where are things building up? What is slipping through the cracks? And observing this means that when you do have time later to tackle these areas, you know which ones to focus on and which ones need your attention. 
Okay, the next thing is around the holidays, if you are hosting and you're having people over, there's lots of conversations and feedback. So as you open up your home to others, you are getting feedback from people on what they think. And we've talked in the past about like the negative side of this coin, which is that people weigh in on your house and they tell you what they think you should do. And that can bring up like feelings of guilt. But this is more like the positive side of the coin. So There's the external stuff, like what parts of your home help you best connect with people from a layout to a conversation piece? Like what parts of your home are getting talked about? Is there, you know, a piece of art you chose that like really sparked a really cool conversation when you had people over or a sentimental item that like helped everyone relive um, cool memories together of a vacation or an event or something? So what Things in your house are helping you connect with people and creating those kinds of moments. And then what physical things when it comes to hosting, like what does that look like? Um, Is there enough room for everyone? Do you need to rework this situation for next year kind of thing? Um, Do you need a expanding dining table that can expand more and hold more people? Um, there's really cool ones. There's one called the transformer table that literally is a console table like against a wall, but it pops out to a table that can hold 12 people. So like what kind of physical elements when you bring people in your home, like what's working, what isn't Um, guest rooms, because this is like the time of year when it's those spaces that you don't use a lot because you don't host maybe throughout the whole year, you're turning your attention to them and you're realizing, Ooh, I need this and I need this and I need this. And so Yeah, notice what you need to change about those spaces so that you can do the big stuff later and the small stuff now, like if you need new sheets. And then the internal stuff. So like when you have people into your home, what feelings do you have coming up about your home? Do you feel really proud and you're like, oh my gosh, I've like worked on my house all year and finally people get to see like all of my projects, all of my hard work. Like I'm so excited to share this with everyone and show this to everyone. Do you feel ashamed? Like, do you feel like, oh my gosh, everyone's going to see like what's really happening or everyone's going to see my like unfinished stuff or messy area or you may feel like ashamed or judged or just a lot of pressure like having people over um, can feel very intimate and invasive it feels like you're opening up a part of yourself to someone and we always talk about how your spaces can be like a reflection of what's going on inside like it's an external reflection of what is happening internally for you and so letting people into your environment it's like it can be vulnerable so just notice like what this looks like for you. And if you need help with this process, you should grab the journal because that's what this is all about is like helping you unpack the ideas we have about our house and figuring out what you truly want out of your spaces. So if you don't know how to do this on your own to process this, because it can be a lot, grab this journal because it's pretty um, and it will help you do that. You can just type in make space journal on Amazon and there's a hardcover or a paperback. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, this like conversations and feedback it might just be like positive feedback to help you know you're doing it right like it could just be like you worked so hard on your house all year you finally get to share it you finally get to like take a break and rest and enjoy the holidays and have people over and it's like kind of a moment of like I did it and I earned this and this is so fun and um taking a break from projects and just like letting yourself enjoy your house even if there's unfinished things like we'll get to those later but like how can you enjoy your house now like actually live in it actually like be like I'm not waiting to have people over I'm not waiting to what to till it gets to a point where I'm like oh my house is finished like your house will never be finished um I can tell you that from experience there will always be something you want to change or Um, shift even if it's little things or maybe it's huge projects but yeah so it could be like a mountaintop moment of like look what I did look how far I come I'm taking a break I'm taking in the summit and I'm like you know just resting and happy or it could be like it could just point to some practical changes that you can make like use this time to really observe those things that are coming up that you're like, ooh, this isn't working. This is hard. This doesn't feel fun. And 
kind of think about like what how could I change this and know that like you don't have to do it right now but like now that we know now that we're aware um we can make a plan and then we can make a change and that's like yeah that's how the cycle goes it's like being aware and observing okay the next one is that as the temps are dropping so this is just more general like winter stuff as well as holidays but as um we shift into winter temps are dropping we may be spending more time inside versus outside because it's cold and dark notice how your schedule and routine has shifted and how this is affecting you living in your home so this is like not only holiday disruptions of your schedule but also like with winter um everything is changing schedule wise not everything. Things can be changing schedule wise because you may be living differently because of the cold and you may be, this might show up in your house. So you can kind of just notice like what about your home? And I think this like kind of calls back to the pandemic when a lot of us like spent a lot of time at home, unless you were on the front lines doing the work. Um, a lot of times, a lot of us spent time in our spaces, more time having to live in our homes and realizing like, wow, actually, this isn't really serving me. This house is actually not set up for me to live my best life. And this same effect can happen in the winter. As you spend more time inside, you're like, oh, here's this thing about my house. Now that I'm inside more that I'm noticing that during the summer when I was out and about and traveling, I didn't notice. And so here's a change I need to make. Um, So it's just kind of like using this seasonal time of inside to point to things you could change in the future about your home when it's time to get back out there and do projects. And then the last one is to spend this time reflecting and collecting inspo. So as you're cozy inside, you may be watching your Netflix movies and binging things and reading books, or you might be like kind of just dreaming and collecting inspiration. This is something that I find myself doing naturally. Like I'm inside. I can't like tackle projects as easily. Like I can't do yard work. Um, Even some days it's like too cold to cut wood in the garage. So I want to be doing something. So I spend my time like planning and dreaming and looking forward to all the projects I'm going to tackle when it gets warmer. Um, So yeah, if you, I mean, if you're feeling like you should be doing projects, don't let me stop you. But also, I just want you to know that you have permission or you should give yourself permission in this season to take a break and take it easy and just live in your house instead of always feeling like you have to be changing it or doing better. Um, There's definitely a time for that and there's definitely a time for just enjoying where you're at and what's in front of you. And if there ever is a time to do that, the holidays is a beautiful time to just enjoy that. Um, I've been doing this in, I'm not tackling any projects, but I'm like a, a doer. Like I always have to be doing something, but I've turned my attention to weird Christmas crafts. So we're not tackling any crazy home renovations, organization projects right now, but I'm making a lot of ornaments and that's bringing me joy. And so, um, um, if you want to join me, (laughs) we can do that together and get really into the Christmas decor, um, or whatever holiday you celebrate. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on how to use this season to observe and rest and relax and be in the space you're in and um, not have to be always doing. So with that natural cycle of the seasons, like there's the seasons that are really about doing, which is spring and summer. And then there are seasons that are about like being and reflecting and planning. And that's fall and winter and releasing. Um, And so as we go through that cycle with the natural cycle of the year, um, that can be a really good time to do that. And then obviously your own personal life might not always line up with this. Like you might be moving in the middle of the winter. So there's a lot of doing for you when everyone else can be hibernating. Um, So yeah, just take that and kind of notice it. But I think the seasons can teach us a lot about um, how to use these cycles in our own life. And I know that for me, it's like this happens every month. Like I kind of have a week where I'm just plowing through like crushing projects and then I get tired and then I give myself time to rest and I'm editing videos 
and resting and thinking about like what I want to do and cycling through these things. And so to give you an idea of the other two seasons, like what we're moving into. So winter, um, everyone likes to set like goals and new plans in January, which is such a weird time because it's like still winter. Like just because the calendar date changes doesn't mean that's the like best time for us to get out there and start doing new things. And so if you struggle with New Year's resolutions and you struggle with like, you know, diving into new things in January, I think that's natural. Like, I don't think we're supposed to be doing that yet. I think that cycle actually happens later in spring, which if you're witchier or woo-woo, you know that um, the new year, like there's new year um, and celebrations in spring around like, what is it, the solstice? But like welcoming in spring and that's the time to actually start the new thing. So that's the thing, the cycle I like to follow. So if you're feeling motivated, definitely do it. But if not, you're kind of aligned with nature. And so that's probably fine too. But spring, what we're moving into probably around March. I don't know the exact date of when it becomes spring. Um, But it's all about cultivating and encouraging growth. So it's not like plow through time. It's like planting seeds. So it can be taking time to set goals, making the decision to tackle a new project, intentionally creating a floor plan that functions well, doing some home repairs or reflecting on what you love about your home. So in this phase, it's about starting new things. So this is what we're moving into, whether you choose to make that your January with resolutions or whether you choose to have the winter cycle while it's cold for a little bit longer, um, which I will be doing, and do it later in the spring. And so that would be the time when you spring into action and start all these projects. And I feel like I always kick off this cycle by doing things in the yard, which I never like plan But I just eventually get so sick of winter and it being cold that I'm like, it's time to get back out there. And in like April-ish, I'm out doing some kind of project, whether it's building a deck or something in the yard. Um, So yeah, it helps you. Spring kind of helps you come back to center and start the new cycle. So it's like you go through spring or your spring is where like the cycle starts, right? So you're starting new things, planting seeds. Um, putting, make, doing all the planning. And then in summer, it's like plow through time. It's like action, doing productivity, which is the cycle that our culture likes to have us in all the time of just like, do, 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 go, go, go. Pro- like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> are you being productive? And then after that cycle, when you get tired and exhausted, <laughs> um, you kind of move into the fall cycle where you are releasing. It's like, which I... <laughs> the negative version of this is that you get burnt out, right? And you have done, 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 do, do, do action. And you're so exhausted and tired. You're like, I'm tired, burn it all to the ground. And so fall, you're like releasing things like throw this out, get rid of this. I'm not doing this. No thanks on this. And so it's kind of a natural like balance to summer being like, um, let's get rid of some stuff. Like let's stop wasting energy on this stuff. Cause I just, you know, was in the doing cycle. And so after that, the big like purge, release, clearing, leaves falling, then you move into winter, which is like the real rest, like reflection cycle. And so uh, I, we didn't read summer. Okay. So summer, when you're do, do, doing, um, it's all about doing more of what's working, taking the next steps to make things even better. It can be a gratitude practice, tackling fun and transformational home projects, It's all about taking action to bring about the changes you're crystal clear on. And you got crystal clear because you took time in winter to like think and reflect and observe like what you just did, what worked, what do you want? So you get crystal clear in spring, you plant those seeds, make those plans. And in summer, you can just plow through. You don't have to stop to be like, what should I be doing? Like you are just work mode kind of vibes. Um, so summer is like a major growth phase. It's all about adding beautiful new things to your life or routine. And you can see this with plants, like the plants have massive growth, like from a seed to a whole plant in the summer in just those few short months. So that's kind of like how I like to view growth cycles and how they can kind of align with what, how you're planning for your home. 
because I always say like we plan for our fitness and finances, but not our home. And so how do we do that? Like with, how do we do that where we can't step away? Like we're still living in our home and we have to make these changes while we live here. And I think it's through this kind of like spring, summer, natural cycle. And so those are like the little descriptions. And I guess I can't show you this because you can't see, but if you want to kind of go through this process and you get the journal, there's like questions for each phase of this cycle that you can go through that are specifically pertaining to your home. And so you can do um, those. I'm going to see if there's any good ones for what we're currently in. Yeah. So questions for the winter phase would be, what do you struggle with the most when it comes to a consistent cleaning routine for your home? So that's a good one where it's like, we are out and about, we are not in our normal routine, we don't have time to clean. Like, how do we create a routine that's easy to manage and attainable and um, easy to just squeeze in every day so that we're not like letting things build up and then having to dedicate a full day to cleaning. Um, A good technique I like for this is that episode with Becky, Clean Mama, where she talks about how to create like a sustainable cleaning routine. She has like a little like schedule you can follow where it's like Monday you do this, Tuesday you do this. You like don't even have to think about it. And um, it's like Tuesday you do bathrooms and this and Monday you do floors and she has like a whole little set schedule and then she has like daily things. She does like wipe counters so that it's sustainable. Um, But yeah, it's like when our schedule blows up, those little things are what keeps things manageable and doable because you can just squeeze them in where if you're relying on like a weekly deep clean, probably not going to happen during the holidays. So then it's like really intense. Yeah. So there's a lot around cleaning. Let's see if I can give you one more question. Yeah, those are about cleaning. Okay. But I think that's, I think that's it. I don't know if I have anything else on this. I feel like we went around in a circle, but like, I guess that's the point because we were talking about it as a cycle. But yeah, in conclusion, to orient ourselves in where we are in the natural cycle of things, it's winter. It's time to slow down, hibernate, observe, enjoy your home, and do some of those releasing activities if you missed it in the fall. And you don't have to make a big crazy plan for your home starting in January if you don't want to. You can still be in this like relaxation cycle. And I think it is wild for us to think that we can go from a busy December of holidays straight into like action mode. It's like, when do I get to rest after all of this hosting and eating carbs and drinking and going to parties and doing things like you might need a month to just rest and get back into your routine. So if you want to skip the resolutions with me, uh, let's do it. That's like the most fun rebellion is like we don't have to do resolutions and fix our whole life we can just kind of rest and recoup from the holidays because we're in the winter phase um so yeah what's coming up next is spring we'll cover that when it's springtime when that shift happens and what we can be doing then but for now live in your house eat all the snacks hang out with your friends and just observe like just see what's changing where the problem areas are what you could do better and just like yeah, reflect on that a little bit. That's all I have for you. Um, Enjoy your holidays, whatever you celebrate. This episode was very oriented to Christmas because that's what I celebrate, but whether it's Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or Yule or nothing, um, take that as it applies to you also because it's all still the same winter phase and of celebrating and different expressions of that. So Um, have fun holidays and I'll see you back in January, uh, for more things or there's another week. I don't know. Hard to say. I'll see you next week. So bye. Um, thanks for listening. And if you've got more episodes to catch up on, binge on, don't let me stop you. But if you've got a second, you should come say hi on Insta at make space pod. And if you're an overachiever, you can also leave a review and I'll love you forever. If you're new here, hit that follow button to officially become a DIY queen and join all the amazing humans tuning in every week. 